Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Manoj Kumar, Venture Solution Architect working for Thermo Blood and Cell Technologies. Okay. Just have a quick intro about uh, your background. Maybe you will start with Vasim. Hi, hi everyone. Hi Manoj bro. Hi Raj bro. Yeah, so myself Vasim. Uh, like to be honest with you, uh, I have completed my uh, master's recently. Uh, in May 2024. Before that, uh, I I worked as a software engineer in TCS after my uh, BTEC in 2020. So I have a, a two years of experience in TCS and then. I moved to US for masters and then completed masters. Yeah, so that's about me. Okay, thanks for seeing. Okay, how about you, Ramandir? Uh, hi, I don't have any experience past in my back in my country, but uh, I completed my bachelor's in two thousand twenty, and I came to United States in two thousand twenty one, and I completed my masters in computer science here in two thousand twenty three. Uh, now I'm in currently on OPT status. Okay, good. Okay, um, Gayatri. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Gayatri and I don't have any experience uh, back in India, but recently I have completed my master's in December and I'm, uh, I'm on my OPT status. Okay, good. Muhammad. Yeah, hi, Manoj. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Abdul Rahim. Uh, um, back to India, I have experience, but not in the uh, software side. I have done my in, uh, in the marketing side, so I don't have experience in the software side or anything. And I have completed my master's in December 2023 uh, in the ITPM Information Technology Project Management. And I have done my internship uh, uh, with one of uh, company in Microsoft Azure as administration in IT support. Uh, I have this thing experience, but not the, but not in the IUP element. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so now we have one more participant. Vishwanath, uh, could like a quick background about your profile? Vishwanath, you're there? Yeah, hello. Yep. Hey, hi, uh, this is Vishwanath Kandimala. I had recently graduated from Western Illinois University from Computer Science and Information Technology. Actually, I don't have any professional experience uh, and I'm, I'm looking for to start as a fresher. So I had a... Uh, I had basic knowledge about uh, SQL, Java, and uh, yeah. That's good enough, okay? So before we start, so today we are going to see uh, what is PLM, what is Finchel, and the basic UI navigation, because you need to understand what is PLM, why we use PLM, Okay, before we go into some technical details about PLM, how we use in uh, different organizations. Um, so before we start, okay, you guys will be trained uh, in Vinchel as a developer. Okay, so the basic uh, requirement to be a Vinchel developer, <clears throat> you need to know basic Java don't need to be an expert in Java, but you need to know at least how to read a Java file and a little bit of JavaScript and a basic SQL should be enough. Uh, this is the, a basic requirement to become a Vinchel developer. So if you guys don't have uh, this experience, uh, please let me know. So I guess hope you have uh, some uh, software development experience, right? Yes, we have. Okay, that's uh, good enough. 
<clears throat> and uh, I believe you have a few sessions with Kumar regarding Vinchul. Okay, so uh, maybe what's your understanding about Vinchul? So what is Vinchul? Why are we using Vinchul? Just to check how much you guys. Uh, oh, Manoj, I don't have the uh, identities in the um, this uh, ancient one, so I don't know anything about that one right now. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. That's totally fine. You don't need to anything about Vinchil. But um, so, what you learned in the sessions with Kumar? Just want to check uh, what but you guys have already been thought of. Wasim, you have to answer that because you are there and yeah, 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 yeah. I'll, I will elaborate that. So, uh, yes, Manoj. So basically, I will just speak out what I understood from Kumar's uh, like sessions. Uh, basically, I understood what is PLM like the product life cycle management in which uh, he firstly make us like he made us understand uh, how a life cycle works like from from right from uh, top top end to like whole life cycle basically we have to understand and get this system like uh, the process should be smooth enough uh, uh, he tried to explain us like we have to get all the systems connected where, uh, where we come into the picture and there are some platforms uh, for example like Winchill is one of the platform uh, uh, we use that and in the next sessions he was explaining us uh, he was showing us all the tools and buttons uh, like what the like winchill has and like he was trying to explain like uh, we have cad management system we have document management like uh, change management bom he was just trying to explain what was there uh, in winchill like like that's what i understood from his sessions like the overview Okay, uh, thanks for saying. So today we are going to cover some of uh, the things that Kumar uh, already talked about because I want to give an overview before I start uh, to talk about the other things, okay? Uh, if you have any questions, if you don't understand uh, uh, any of the things that we talk about, just let me know, okay? Uh, let me share my screen. Can you all see my screen? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, so today, Ajanta, so we are going to see a, a Winchell overview and the basic navigation in a Winchell home interface and the Winchell architecture. Okay, this should be your base before uh, we move on to some advanced topic. So you need to have an understanding about what is Winchell, why we use Winchell, okay? Um, so in any product development space, there are a number of different systems we use to create, manufacture, and deliver a product. Any product, car, tractor, a computer, okay? So any manufacturing space in the product development, there are many different softwares. But if you uh, take the key software that they use, the first one will be their CAD application. So computer-aided design. That should be their starting point where they design all their components, okay? Next is PLM. I'll talk about what is PLM in the next slide, okay? Product lifecycle management, eventually. And ERP, enterprise resource planning. Uh, so. ERP is a counterpart for PLM, okay? We design in Winchell and uh, we manufacture in SAP. Okay, let's see. What is Winchell? Okay. Or what is PLM? First, before we start, what is PLM? Okay, PLM is a integrated information rewind system consists of different process uh, which helps an organization to track the life cycle of a product from concept to design and till its disposal, to track a maturity of a product. Uh, the PLM helps a company to develop new products and bring them to market quickly and in an effective way. So this is PLM, the high level uh, definition for a PLM. Okay, and what is Winchell here? Okay. 
Winchell is a PTC offering of PLM. Uh, PTC is the vendor for PLM. So they, uh, the vendor for both Creo and Winchell. Creo is their CAD application and Winchell is their PLM tool. Um, and PLM is a web-based enterprise application. So you just need a browser uh, to access Winchell and even Creo, uh, the CAD tool, have an inbuilt browser to access Winchell inside that. Um, so Winchell is highly configurable and customizable. What do you mean by configuration and customization? Okay, these are the two things you're going to hear often when you start working on requirements in Winchell. Um, so out of the box, we, we call it as OOTB, which means out of the box. So once we have a fresh installation, what all the options we have is called we out of the box. Um, so most of the companies will have some business process for which we need to do configure and customize Winchell, okay, to fit their business process. Um, configure anything which requires some sort of coding is called customization, okay? So we need uh, a programmer to develop that customization. Configuration is anything without programming. So we can do it through a property file or some preference changes from the UI. Those are all called configurations. So it's always preferred to configure a solution if we could. Uh, customization should be your last option. Okay, uh, so Winchell comes with uh, a number of modules. Um, it's not, it's like a single enterprise solution. Like SAP, it has a lot of modules in it. Okay. The, the core module of Winchell is called PDM Link, Product Data Management. Okay, where we have uh, our CAD objects managed and controlled inside Winchell. So CAD object in the sense, the drawing we develop in our uh, Creo system, all those drawings uh, comes into Winchill and managed using PDM link. And uh, the other important module is called project link, uh, which is used for collaborating with your partners, vendors, and customers. If there is any major project, we will see it in the UI, okay? Just don't get... Uh, uh, confused with these terms, uh, just keep it in the mind. And when you see it in the UI, you will have a better understanding. And we have supplier management. Supplier management is, uh, so not every organization is going to make all their parts required for their product in-house. Most of the parts will be procured from a supplier. Okay. How we are going to manage those suppliers. So is it a preferred supplier or not allowed or ready to use? those information, we use supplier management to manage inside Winchell. And we have uh, another module called MPM link, which is used to manage your MBOM and process plans. So when I say BOM, this is also other term you're going to uh, hear a lot, very often. It's called bill of materials. Okay. Every part, every product will have a lot of parts in it. Okay, The list of parts that makes the product is called bill of materials. When I say MBOM, it's manufacturing bill of material. Uh, we are going to see all this uh, terms and technical details in detail in the upcoming session. Okay, so Winchell has a lot of modules. What are the main functions of Winchell? Uh, I guess, uh, as Wasim said, uh, Kumar have a given an overview about the different things we do in Winchell. Um, so the first one is the CAD data management. Okay, this is where your Creo files comes into Winchell and managed using PDM link. Anything you created in Creo is called a CAD object in Winchell. So this CAD objects are managed using PDM link in Winchell. The next important uh, function is document management. Some organization use Winchell just for document management. So Winchell can read any electronic file. So you can manage any electronic file, Word, Excel, PDF, images, test results in Winchell created as a document. When you say what is the management, okay? 
uh, let's say I have a, a training document. When a new user joins a company, he need to give some training. They need to complete a certain prerequisite training to perform their duty. And we have a, a PDF document which they need to go through, which completes their training. And we are going to keep updating the document. So how we are going to maintain which version of the document is current and who needs to approve if there are any modification. Those things will be managed in Winchill. We'll see how this happens in real time in our live demo. And the next is release management. Um, this is uh, to track the maturity of your product using lifecycle. Uh, life cycle is a separate concept. Uh, we'll see all these terms we talk about in this overview. We're going to see it in detail in the upcoming session. Okay. Um, so the uh, next thing is change management. In any organization, change management is a key integral part. Because uh, now I have a, a product which is in production and released to market. Let's say a car. And... Uh, Customers are complaining, okay, there is some uh, noise coming in the car, which is in production. And we found, okay, we need to change a dimension of a timing belt. How we are going to make that change in our uh, bill of material. So we need a process to bring this change using problem report, change request, and change notice. So I'll change object. We'll see all these things in detail. Uh, next is bomb management. Uh, so whenever we uh, create data in Creo, uh, we build an assembly. So it's not just parts which comes into Winchell. So all those parts will be assembled into a real product in our CAD tool and push it to Winchell. So this is called BOM. Okay, there are two types of BOM. We usually say E-BOM and M-BOM. So E-BOM is what the design engineers assemble. When it goes to manufacturing, there are other components uh, we need to manufacture that product, which we cannot design in our Creo. For example, uh, we need some shipping label. Um, we need warranty card. We cannot design that in uh, our Creo. So it won't be part of our engineering bill of material. But when it goes to manufacturing, we add all these other components and make it as an M-bomb and send it to manufacturing. Next thing is manufacturing process planning. This is part of the MPM link. Okay, So once the uh, bomb goes to uh, the production floor, how the part, the product should be manufactured. We need a plan for that. So those process plans will be defined inside Winchell. So in the production floor, they follow that plan to manufacture that product. Next one is supplier management. Um, so this is uh, to give when the design engineer is designing a part. So we'll have a list of supplier where we can procure that part, the supplier will be flagged as approved supplier or preferred or not to use. So this is to manage our supplier information. Um, collaboration is using Project Link uh, to collaborate with external vendors or other users who are not part of the organization. And last one is visualization. Uh, this is a key component in Winchell. So I've worked for John Deere for quite some time. There, they use Winchell mainly for visualization. What is meant by visualization? Okay, I uh, design a product in Creo and checked into Winchell. To view that product, I don't need the authoring application Creo. We have a uh, we have a client application called Creo View. So once it is uh, published in Winchell, it will create a lightweight viewables. So we can see, see the same exact assembly in Creo view without the authoring application. It's a lightweight component. So if there are any changes required, anyone can, with proper authorization, can annotate it. Okay, these are the changes we need and send back to the design engineer it to visualize our product. Okay. Any questions here? Uh, yes, Manod. Uh... So I would like to ask, like, in order to visualize, like, everything has to be started from CAD data management, right? Like, 
from the scratch it has to be started and then it will go through all this processing and then we can visualize if that you want to mean so yeah the visualization uh, information comes from the creo model yeah so yeah my question is like uh for like in order to reach visualization uh like it has to be taken these steps like in order everything has to go through each and every step and then it will reach visualization something like that yes so okay. i open my creo view i design a part mm -hmm. and push it to winchell okay. once it comes to winchell uh, there is a option called publish so it will create a representation for that structure okay. which we will view using creo view okay okay thank you Okay, so uh, so today we are going to see about uh, CAD data management. Okay, so computer aided design data management. So when we push data to Winchell, where the file will go, it won't go to our database. So the actual content of our product will go to a vault. Vault is an encrypted storage in our file uh, file system. So most of the organization uses Linux as their server. Developers will use Windows. So this vault is an encrypted storage in their file system. Okay, we cannot directly access it, it will be encrypted. So whenever we push our data to Winchell, all the actual content will go to the vault and the metadata will sit in the database. Next is access control. So access control defines who have permission to view an object. And also it explains whether he can read the object or he can edit the object or he can delete the object or he can create the object. There are different access permission we can define, which we will see in our policy administration in detail. Because when it comes to uh, any data management, access control is a key thing. I can so uh, when I was working for uh, Caterpillar, we work for some military projects. Only a few set of users will have access to the data which relate to that military project. So everyone have access to other products, but only a set of people who have the cleared. Uh, the military clearance will have access to this military data. So these things will be defined using Thank access you. control. Access, access. Next is version history. Let's say I'm a designer. Uh, I'm designing a car. So I create an initial version of the part. Let's say uh, a wheel and send it to my supervisor for the approval. And he will say, okay, there are a few changes needed and it'll, he will send back the design to me. Again, I'll make some change and send, send it back to him. He will suggest some change. It will come back and forth. So every design I create is called an iteration. So Winch will have an option to store this history, the design history. So I can go back in time and see what was my initial design and anything in between. So we have that option to track the history. That is one of the key thing needed for PLM. Next is revision control. It is similar to version, but what's the difference is, uh, let's say after 10th iteration, the manager approved it and it went to production. Now it's in the market. People started using it. And uh, there was a complaint, okay, so the we need to increase the diameter of the wheel. So we are going to have a change process to implement the change. But this time, let's say my initial design was A.13. When we have this change, I'm going to revise my wheel so it will become B.1. So anything major, we call it as a revision. Anything minor, we call it as iteration. Iterations are captured in the version history and revisions are captured using revision control. That's the difference. The next one is metadata. 
uh, as you all know, so what's metadata? It's data about the data. Uh, when we have uh, the CAD drawing comes into Winchell, there are other things we store about the CAD, which is not authored in the CRIO, like who created the document, who was the last modified person. And we can also have custom attribute. What should be the color of the wheel and where it is manufactured. And if you, have, if you need any security clearance, we can add all those attributes. This will call metadata. Metadata always sits in the database. Only the actual content goes to the vault. Next, product structure. Product structure is nothing but your bomb. So when we create any product, we create an actual structure of the product. Okay, so it starts with car. The car will have a child parts called engine, transmission, and body. And uh, the engine will have a subcomponents called okay, wall, timing belt, um, and other components. Okay, we are going to make a structure. So how we are going to make this structure is using a product structure explorer in Winchill. It has an option to create the parent-child relationship. Again, it will be uh, technical. If I explain all those things, so you'll be puzzled, but don't worry. We are going to see all these things in detail. Just a high-level overview. Just to get the, the conceptual view about uh, these terms. Okay, Don't go too technical in this. Okay. Next one is promotion and releases. Okay, now I have a part which is ready for manufacturing. And we I need a process to promote that part or product to manufacturing. And we have a process in Winchell that we follow to promote and release the product to manufacturing. That is promotion and release. Next one is notification. Um, let's say I want to uh, notify in an email if someone modifies a specific part, I can subscribe to any part for any event. Let's say if, I, if someone modifies a part, or someone deletes the part, or someone creates one. So we can subscribe to all those events in Winchill. And we'll get an email notification when uh, someone does that event. So all this key data functions creates the actual PLM system. When we say it will help to track a maturity of a product from concept to obsolete. So these are all the things that PLM should provide to make it as PLM. Any questions here? So guys, you need to raise questions to get more info. I three, everyone. So all these topics is going to make more sense when we start uh, using Winchell. Okay, when you have hands-on and start using all these uh, different things, then this will make more sense. Yeah. Okay, before we jump into the UI part, uh, this is a Winchell system architecture. Uh, we have Apache as our web server. Uh, so part of this, we are going to see how to install Winchill. So in that we will see all these components. Okay. We'll have a separate session to see how to install Winchill because you need to know all these components. Um, so Apache is our web server. It's all provided by PTC. Uh, you can go to, uh, I'll show you where to uh, download uh, the installables. And Apache will authenticate and inside Winchill we have uh, access control policies which will authorize for any specific resource that you try to access and there are two ways uh, we can access Winchill one is through Creo's inbuilt browser and also through web browser okay um, so all your transactions will run under the Winchill server Winchill server have two components server manager which manages the method server this is where 
uh, all your transactions will run inside the method server. Server manager is just to manage your method server. And we have tom Tomcat embedded into the method server. There is uh, before Winchell 10, we have Tomcat as a separate component. Uh, but after Winchell 10, it is embedded in method server. Uh, so you also need to know what all the versions we have in Winchell. So currently, uh, Winchell is in Winchell version 13. Okay, so LDAP. It's a directory server where we store users and groups information. In uh, real time, they, this will be replaced with our enterprise active directory. And uh, Winchill supports both Oracle and SQL server, but most of them use Oracle. And we have file walls where we save the contents. This is a simple architectural diagram. We have other components, which I didn't include here, but you will get to know once you start uh, using Winchell. Uh, Manoj, sorry for interrupting you. Yeah. I have one question. Hmm. So uh, we have to use Oracle SQL server only, or we can use any other server for, for, hmm. uh, for, for yeah. RDBMS? Either Oracle or SQL server. OK. Um, so. Winchell provides a compatibility matrix document. So that document will tell you what version of Oracle, Java, and uh, the Linux version or the Windows Server version that is supported for the given Winchell version. If it's Winchell 13, there's a separate document which tells these are the versions that are supported for this installation. Till Winchell 11.2, Java comes uh, part of the PTC build package. After Oracle acquired Java, so they made uh, a commercial license. Um, so we need to use uh, Amazon Java flavor for your installation. <laughs> okay. Any questions here? Good. Uh, let's go to the UI and see the basic navigation. Can you see my browser? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is uh, usually Winchell is a web app name that we configured in our uh, server. Okay. Uh, we put our server name followed by the web app name, like how we access uh, other web application. Without Winchell, it say it works. Um, um, this is. Uh, a cloud system configured by PTC, so it's have a, a different functionality, okay? But when you add Winchill, it will take you to the Winchill landing page. Um, so th this is the default behavior out of the box. If you don't want this in your next startup, you can check this button, okay? In the top left, you can see the user logged in. Uh, unfortunately, Winchell doesn't provide a logout button. So if you want to log in with a different user, you have to use a different browser or incognito mode. Even if I close and open this, it's going to take my uh, login details from the cookie. It's not going to ask the username and password. But if you use that in incognito mode, Will you ask for the uh, user credentials? So this authentication is happening in our Apache web server. Okay, so there's no logout button. And uh, if you see in the top right, this is our basic search. So most of the time, anything you're looking for, 
you're going to use this search. And you see, uh, it says all type. If I click this, initially it says all type. But I, if I want to narrow down my search to a specific part, these are the objects in Winchell. Let's say I want to search a document. I don't want to search on other objects. I click document. Or if I want to search only on document and part, I click this. If I want to do a search on all types, I click this. Okay. Let's try to get a document name and do a search. So this is a customer experience. This is a quality model, which we didn't talk about. Okay, let's take a document here. When I click search, it's going to expand the navigator and give me the results. If you see, um, for this number, I got two objects because both are different revisions. One is A.1, another is B.2. If you go to the, this is called eyeball. Um, it will take you to the object details page. Since we also have a B revision, that's why we have we see this hyperlink called go to latest. It will take me to the B revision. Okay, all these navigations we will see later. Now we are going to see the basic uh, user navigations here. Okay, to take me to the home page, there are two ways we can do it. Either you remove all these things, click enter, it will take you to the home page, or click this home button. We'll take to the home page. There is another way. If you expand uh, the navigator, the home button is also here. Okay. This is my home screen. So whenever users goes to the home screen, out of the box, these are the three tables that they're going to see. So the my task will contain uh, the task assigned to that user. So, okay. These are the tasks they need to perform. Part of different process. Let's say I am a manager, so I want to approve a design, so I'll get a approved design task. I can either approve it or send back to the designer to rework on it. And updates will show, uh, we talked about the subscriptions, right? So I can subscribe to any object, so any update to that part will show here. Another is checked out work. If I'm a design engineer, so any part that I'm working on will be available here. Initially, I said uh, Winchell is highly configurable and customizable. Okay, If I say customize, I can add more tables here. So any information uh, that displayed in Winchell, mostly it will be in a tabular format. And go to my meetings, so it will be updated here can add my subscriptions, my reports, or I can uncheck this. Okay, so this is the Angel homepage for any given user. The next one, if you see in the top right, we have the quick links. Okay. The help icon, this is like Winchel Wikipedia. So anything you need to uh, get more details about, this will have all the details. Fundamentals, basic administration, enterprise administration, basic customization, user interface customization. It will have details about all the functionalities in Venture. Also, anywhere you go, any wizard you go, there'll be a help icon, let's say. This is a help icon. It will directly take you to the, the page you click the help icon from. So it will be directly take you to the page. It will say in the create document, what all the options you have, how to use that wizard. 
Okay, coming back here. Um, so in my settings, I have preference. Preference controls the behavior of the Winchell system. We will see more about preference in our upcoming class. Okay, so this is the user preference, and but we can also control the preference for the entire site and uh, email page. Let's say uh, I want to uh, send information about a part to a user. I can email them the page, any page. If I go to uh, the part I want, I can email uh, the details about this document to that user using this email page. So my notebook is kind of a bookmark, Winchell bookmarks, I'd say. Um, if you want to uh, save any object, you can use this My Notebook and save it here. Later, you can directly go to this My Notebook, and from here, you can navigate to that specific object. You don't need to search it. You can directly go there. And next important thing you are going to mostly use is recently accessed. This is going to give me the list of objects that I recently visited. Okay. Let's say you're done for the day, and next morning you're coming to work, and you want to start from where you left uh, the previous day evening. Okay, you go to your recently access, go to your part, and start working on it. Okay, now let's go to the navigator. The first one is the recently visited. It's going to show me the containers which I recently visited. When you say containers, it's either products or library. Okay, the difference between a product and library is a library holds parts which are used in more than one product. For example, bowl, nut, it will be used in multiple products. Products where we store information which is used only for that specific product. That's the difference, or else everything is the same. It's going to have the same structure. Okay. So here uh, I have a product called Thermo PTC. So it's going to show me only the recent product that I looked into. If I want to see all the product that I have access, I need to click View All. So now I have two products. Winchell may have more than two product, but whichever you have access to will be listed here. But when you start working on Winchell project, you all will have org or site admin access. So you can view all the products. This is just for the users. Okay, if I click this NW renal systems, it will take me to this folder view. This is the view most of the times you're going to work into. Uh, so any document you want to create, this is like, uh, Windows File Explorer. Uh, so this is the folder structure and whatever in the base folder will be listed here. If I click designs, this will, is going to change. Whatever inside design will be listed here. I'm just showing you the, the basic UI navigation, okay? So still we didn't start about looking into uh, the actual Winchell objects. I told you before, so most of the information presented in Winchell will be in a table format. Some tables will have this special dropdown, which is called views. So this table contains a folder. And uh, if you hover over this icon, it will show you what type of object it is. So it is a folder object. It is a design history file. This is a document, okay? Now I want to see only documents in this for in this location. So I click documents. It's going to filter only the documents. I want to see only the parts in this location. Okay, it's going to give me only the parts. You see, this one has a representation. This representation comes from a CAD file. So it's published here. 
if you want to view it, I can click it. So this is just thumbnail. And from here, I can create document. I can create part. So anything I want, I can create it from here. If you want to create a new folder, I click this button, I create a new folder here. This is how we create new objects. Okay. Let's say I want to create a bomb. I told you, right? So it's also used for bomb management. Let's go to the structure. Okay. So this is a details page. So every object will have a details page. This will have the metadata information. The name and number, last, last modified date, last modified by the status. Checked out, check in. Uh, if someone wants to update this part, first they need to check out the part so that they can modify this. If someone checked out this, then it will the status will be checked out. Others cannot make any change until the user who checked out checks back in. Okay, so it will have some uh, general attribute details, so assembly mode. Uh, so these are all highly configurable. So based on the business requirement, we can add any attribute we want here. And what is the state of the part? The metadata. So all these things we will see in type and attribute manager. So then you will know how this page is configured. So the top level part is called power supply assembly. So below that, we have few parts. If you see this icon, meaning that this part have more child parts. It's a fan assembly. So it has screw, fan, and grill. See, this is the fan assembly. Let's see if they have any visualization here. So when I say visualization, this is what I meant. So I can view the component. Okay. If, I add, if you want to add another part inside the fan assembly, I go here, right click, insert new part or existing part. So by this, we can establish the parent-child relationship. I'm adding more part to this assembly. We'll see about bomb management in detail in our upcoming class. Okay, any questions? Yes, uh, Manoj, uh, like I'm just asking you, uh, like what will be a role of the PLM developer? Like, uh, like to be honest, like do we have to design, like just you have shown the visualization, right? So what I want to know is exactly what will be a role of a PLM developer? Would we uh, need to be visual, like uh, creating these gadgets and then playing around with this tool? Or like, I don't, I want to know what exactly will be the role of PLM developer. Okay. So you are not going to create any designs. Okay. So uh, the yeah. design engineers will create that. But okay. your, your job is to configure or customize the system as per the business requirement. So this is an out-of-the-box system. So mostly they don't use out-of-the-box. If you see the state here, it says this is coming from a life cycle. Mm -hmm. Concept, so this part has these different states. Concept, design, prototype, pending change, released, obsolete, under review. Some business users will ask, okay, I don't need this state, but I want in work, design, and released. So how we are going to bring that change to part? And now we are seeing only one part, okay? Uh, let's go to this new part. So these are the different types of part I can create. The, the, the users will ask, now I want a design part, named design part, or uh, a supplier part. How we are going to add those types in this dropdown, okay? And they say, okay, I, for design part, I want these state in my life cycle. For supplier part, I want this state in my life cycle. Okay. For 
design part i don't want anyone to approve the design but for supplier part i want approval from these many people okay so because every product will have a team anything i design uh, for this product needs to be approved by user 1 2 3 and anything i design in this thermo product needs to be approved by user 5 and 6 how we are going to make the changes in winchill so I, let's say i have a part here i want to add more attributes here how we are going to add it so these are all the changes that you need to perform okay so basically we have to work on this platform according to the business requirement right right yeah you so, have to either use configuration or customization now if you see the number starts with one two three four five six seven okay the user may ask okay i want a pr in my number fix any any number any part number should start with pr zero 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 one pr zero 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 two how we are going to do it and access control policies. You're going to define some ACLs as well. Mm -hmm. And the main part is, so we have something called workflow in Winchill. Okay, workflow is, is to automate any business process. How this business process is automated. Okay, I designed a part. Now it goes to a first panel who reviews it. Once they approve it, it goes to second panel. Once they reject it, it comes back to me. How all these things happens in Winchill? Through workflow depends on the business process you have to customize that workflow and if you see the version starts with a.1 someone asks, okay i don't want a.1 i want 1.1 in my system and it should go with 2.1 3.1 when i revise it instead of abc i want 1 2 3 or aa.1 ab.1 ac.1 that should be my revision sequence These are all things that you need to work on. So before you start working on those kind of requirements, you need to understand the system. Mm -hmm. So what are, what's the what is the capability of Finchel? What I can do? What I can do with configuration when I need to go for customization? See, these screens, is, we don't write HTML or... Uh, or JSP to build the screens, okay? There is a framework which build all this component. You want to understand the framework. If you, I'll show you. See, uh, all this conference comes from a Java class. You see the data utility, it says number data utility. Number data utility is a Java class, which builds this text box. This one is default data utility. This is view attribute data utility. So we have Java classes to build this UI component. So any changes or any functional changes to this Java classes, you have to create your own data utility, extending this one and register it to this attribute. How to register this to this attribute? So then I want to add another, another step here. So this is a wizard step. I will select document. It's a set attachment. Now I want to add one more wizard step. How I'm going to do that? These are the things in real time you'll be working on. You are going to design and develop solution for different business requirement. What I'm telling you is, is for a Winchell users. So you are not Winchell user. Okay, you're going to design and develop solution for those users. Okay, got it, Manoj, thank you. Okay, see now this one is checked out 
by different user. So I cannot, so this user is working on, for example, if uh, she's a design engineer, so she's making some changes to this part. Until the user checks in, I cannot check out the check out this part or make any change. Since I'm an admin, I have an option to do undo checkout. But if you're a normal user, you cannot make any changes to this part until this user checks in. So there'll be a lot of uh, small icons appear here based on the object. So that you need to understand. How to add attributes here, how to make changes to this detail screen. So now if you see, I have different tabs here. I want one more tab. So I can add tabs if I click plus icon. These are all called temporary tabs. But if you want to make a, a permanent tab, how to add the tab? Uh, let's say I want my uh, SAP information because all these parts will be pushed to SAP where we have information about their cars and procurement. So I want to pull that information from, from SAP and display it here. How you are going to do it? Uh, so there are a lot of other things that we are going to discuss about lifecycle, workflows, access control policies, participant administration, object initialization rules, teams, roles. Once you go th went through all those uh, trainings, then you'll have an idea about, okay, so if I give you a requirement, you should give me a solution. That's the outcome, final outcome. After you complete this training, if I give you a requirement, you should give me a solution, how to design that. But everything is Java, JavaScript. Okay, there is no uh, fancy technology here. For that, you need to have some hands on. So I have built a VMware image. So this is a different Winchell server. This is my local Winchell server. So I'll share this so you can run this server uh, in your laptop. So you need at least a 16 gig RAM for this. So you can start working on this uh, image because without hands-on, it's really hard to uh, understand how this thing works. You need to do have a lot of hands-on, how to navigate, how to go to a different uh, view or different folder. Because these are the basic requirements when you start working on Winchill. That's a good question. Okay, guys. Uh, with this, uh, we will wrap up today's session. Uh, uh, so let's... Well, I have one more question. So a lot of yeah. students are asking me, what is the future of this... Uh, in their career, like if so, people uh, so they are telling like if I do Java or dot net, I see a lot of jobs you know, here and there. So, what is the future of this mm -hmm. learn this kind of PLM oh. like Winchill? What is a career in this? So, Winchill is a niche technology. Okay? There are only handful of people who knows uh, Winchill. In PLM, we have many uh, software, Steam Center. Innovia, Winchell. So the main two players are uh, Team Center and Winchell. Since it is a niche technology, uh, there'll be always openings. It's, you won't find a lot of openings for Winchell, but there'll be always opening. And if you're good at that, you can always clear interview. So I switched up in last September where the market was very dull. Even I didn't uh, have any issues getting a job. I attended only one interview. In a month, I got a job. So getting a job is not a big deal. And when you get a full time, uh, so Winchell's uh, team, usually in any company, Winchell team will be lean. So even though if they are uh, laying off few folks, they won't touch the Winchell team because that is the core for their operation. It's, you're not like a full stack developer where uh, if there is a layoff, they will uh, terminate you, okay? So Winchell is a stable job. You always find job. It's easy to get job. And easy to sustain.
that's the big advantage we have in Winchell. So in any, uh, if even though if the market is very bad, you can easily get a job. Yeah, hi Manoj. This is Abdul. Hmm? Okay. The, yeah, this is Abdul. Yeah, the the job will be for uh, this role is the for uh, like it will be in the product of uh, product and services, right? Mostly like uh, like car companies, like uh, manufacturing companies. Yep. So it will be available in that that uh, sector only, right? Yeah. So uh, if you see uh, the openings, eighty percent of the openings is for contractors. Twenty percent okay. is a full time job. Okay. So there will be always opening, but uh, mostly for contractors, but there will yeah. be always full time jobs. Yeah, that's the ratio usually. So he's asking like, uh, does PLM will be used in only automobile industry or? In no, my company, I told you, my company is Thermo Blood and Cell Technologies. It's a med device company. So we use Winchell for quality. You see here, okay. there is a separate module called quality where we create Custom experience, NCs, and cappers. There are a lot of module in Winchell. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other question, guys? If no questions, uh, we can end this uh, session. Thank you so much, Manoj. Sure, John. Yeah, thank you so much, Manoj. Thank you so much, Manoj. We'll keep thank you, up. Manoj. It was a great session. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye.